Hey guys, and welcome to the continuation of a series that I did a long time ago on my channel, which is essentially programming problems and solutions. Now, some people have been recommending me to do these, so I'm hoping to get at least one of these out per week. So if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do that if you want to see these programming problems. Now, this video is going to be a pretty straightforward, pretty basic uh, set of problems. I'm on this website, codingbat.com, and they have a bunch of Java and Python problems. So I'm going to try to work through the entire warm-up section here of these problems you can see I've already done some of these other ones and once I finish that uh, which hopefully I can get done either in this video or like in two videos then we'll move on to some more difficult problems but I want to make sure that people that are beginners on my channel or maybe even intermediate see kind of how you go about solving a problem like this and then we can work forward into more advanced problems again I recommend you guys just go on coding bat and try these problems for yourself as well I mean, I'm giving you the solutions. They have the solutions, um, but why you would watch me as opposed to just hit show the solution is I'm actually going to explain through and talk about why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, and once we get into some more advanced problems, I'm not going to be using this website anymore because they don't really have any crazy difficult stuff, which is what I want to get into later on in this channel. I want to do some like AP computer science stuff, some pathfinding, um, some problems that might take us a while to figure out, which I think will be fun and exciting. So with that being said, let's get right into uh, warm up. I'm going to do as many of these as I can in like, let's say 10, 15 minutes. And yeah, let's get going. So this one is called string times and essentially given a string, you just have to print it out however many times it tells you. So uh, I mean, this is really straightforward. Python has a method that just does this. And all we're going to do is literally just return str minus multiplied by n. Uh, and you can see that <laughs> what that does is just multiply the string. So you get high, 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 like it just that's pretty trivial. Uh, so next one. <laughs> I don't know if this is the pace we're gonna be able to keep the whole time. Okay, so this one's straight pretty straightforward as well. It says given a string and a non negative int n, we'll say that the front of the string is the first three characters or whatever is there. So if there's less than three characters that like whatever's there, uh, we're gonna return n copies of the front. So this is again, really straightforward. There's a bit there's another thing we have to add here as a check. First of all, is you just have to say if uh, the len of str is less than one, that are less than what am I saying one less than three and we're gonna say copy equals let's do blank like that and we'll say copy equals str um, I guess the entire thing so we can just do that if we want or I will say copy equals str and we'll say else what we'll say is we'll say copy equals str to three so it's gonna go zero one two not include three which means we're gonna get the first three characters of the string and then what we're gonna do is return copy multiplied by n let's try that and there we go so essentially really quickly what i did here was i just created a blank string called copy this is the string that we're going to copy n amount of times and what i did is i said well if the length of this string is less than three then copy is going to be the entire string because it could be one two three or zero characters like you can see the examples here um if it's not then what we'll do is we'll get the first three characters of copy just using the slice operator which gives us index zero one two then we're just going to multiply it by n using the built-in Python method, and there we go. So next problem. And what time are we at? Three minutes. Sweet. Okay, so given a string, return a new string made of every other character starting with the first. So hello yields, yields hlo. All right, guys. Uh, I didn't think these were going to be that easy, but essentially all we're going to do here is just return str uh, colon colon two, and this should give us every other character. Let's try that. And there we go. So what this does again, slice operator. If you don't understand the slice operator, let me know and I'll explain it in like another video. Um, but I do have, I think, some Python tutorials on my channel to explain what this does. But essentially, this is just going to step over every other character and give us, well, all the correct answers. All right. Next question. Warm up to string explosion. Given a non-empty string like code, return a string like C co co. Oh, okay, so you get first, second, third. Okay, so we might actually have to use a loop for this one, which will be new. Um, so we're gonna do the first character, then the second character. Okay, so let's say uh, new str. This is just gonna hold the string that we're gonna return. We're gonna loop through the length of, and I guess I don't need <laughs> squiggly brackets or even that. I've been coding in Java too much. We're gonna say for x in range the length of string. What we're going to do is we're going to say new string plus uh, plus equals or we can say new string equals new string plus str colon x plus one. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to start at the first character and go to the x plus one character. So for our first loop, it's going to give us the first character of our string. So let's say we're working with code here, which is C 
For the second loop, it's going to give us CO like that. For the third loop, it's going to give us COD. And then the fourth one is going to give us CODE, which will in turn make our string. And then we can just do return new str. Let's try that. And there we go. Pretty straightforward on that one. Just really basic for loop here. There's other ways to do this, but this is probably the simplest. Let's actually see what their solution is. Um, yeah, exactly. They did exactly what I did. So there you go. Okay, next uh, next problem. Okay, last two. Given a string, return the count of the number of times that a substring length to appears in that string and also as the last two characters of the string. Uh, I don't understand that last part. Let's see here. So high x x x high yields one. We won't count the end substring. Okay, so we're saying if that appears at the end index, or don't is it don't count the last one, or just don't count? Okay, so I just had a second. I just read through this quickly one more time. I think I understand it now. Um, but essentially, what we're doing is we're actually just getting the last two characters of the string. We're saying that's the substring we're gonna look for, and then we see how many times it appears uh, in the rest of the string. So that's pretty straightforward to do. All we actually have to do is just get, well, first of all, the last two characters, if they exist. So we're first just going to say if the length of our string, is it say there's going to be at least two characters? Uh, it does not. But let's just say if the length of our string is greater than two, greater than or equal to two, um, then what we'll do is we'll say last equals, and then we'll say str colon, and then negative two to the end, and that should give us the last two characters of the string. Else, we're simply just going to return um, zero because, well, they, it would only appear zero. Uh, so actually, we'll return zero if it's two as well because that means it couldn't appear. Actually, if it's if it's uh, if it's three two, we'll return zero. Otherwise, so like if we don't return zero, then what we're going to do is just look for last. So to find last, we can literally just count it, then subtract one. So we'll just say count equals str dot count um, last and then minus one and then return count. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's see. Uh, OK, so we ran into an issue. So maybe I just misunderstood the problem here. So this should be two, apparently. Um, I don't know why that should be two. Uh, let's see. oh, because it appears x, x and then x, x like that, maybe. Um, and it's only counting it as like appearing once possibly. So I guess we could just use a for loop to do this then instead of using the count method. Uh, that's the only thing I can think is the issue here. So let's just do for I in range, the length of str minus two actually, because we're not gonna do the last two elements. Then what we'll simply do is we'll say if, um, I will say like check str equals str i plus str i plus one, which will just give us this one and the next one. So this should actually be minus three, I believe. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if check str equals equals last count plus equals one and we'll put count up here and then we'll just return count. And that should be correct. Let's see. Uh, still, what is the issue with this one? Uh, it should be two. We're getting one. Oh, I guess that's because. So it's not, but don't count the last two characters, which. OK, so let's just do this then. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, there we go. OK, so essentially this just needed to be negative two because uh, on a string of length four, that wasn't going to work. OK, so yeah, so this is how you do it. Essentially, what we're doing is we're first just making sure that our string is at least length three, because if it's not, then that means that actually this should be greater than or equal to. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's still gonna, yeah, it's still going to work um, greater than or equal to because if it's n not greater than that, well, then we know that it can't appear more than one time and we're going to get rid of the last occurrence anyways. Right. That makes sense. Otherwise, we're so if like this is not the case, we're just going to return zero. And then what we're going to do is we're literally just going to count how many times the substring appears. So we'll t look through the string. Uh, we'll get the first letter. So like we'll start by looking at H and I. So we'll go H I and then we'll look at I H and then we'll look at X X and then we'll look at X H and just compare that to the last string, which is well high and see how many times that occurs. And then uh, since we're not even bothering to look at the last two characters of our string, we don't even have to subtract from the count because we're not going to end up counting this last substring anyways. I uh, hope that makes sense. Let's go to the next one. And depending on how long this takes, maybe we'll say this is the last one. Okay. So given an array of ints, 
actually incorrect. That is going to be a list of ints, but uh, let's keep going. <laughs> Return the number of nines in the array. Okay, I mean, that's just, all right. <laughs> Uh, let's let's return nums.count9 and there we go. I don't know why that's one. I, we're obviously doing another one as well. Okay, so array front 9. Given an array of ints, return true. If one of the first four elements in the array is 9, the array may be less than four elements. Okay, so let's just say, first of all, let's do two cases. So one case is the length is at least four. Uh, another case is length is less than four. So the first case is, well, if the len of nums is greater than don't know how I messed that up greater than or equal to four then we'll just say uh, check is equal to and then we'll say nums colon four now otherwise what we'll do is we'll say the check is equal to nums and then what we're gonna do is literally just count uh, one more time so we'll say return nums dot count nine and this will count the amount of nines in the first four elements of our array or list. Okay, so let's try that. Um, what is it? True nums.count9. How? Oh, what is it? Oh, sorry. The array is if one of the first four elements in the array is nine. Okay, so that's sorry. That's just my bad on reading the question incorrectly there. Uh, we'll say we'll get the count. So we'll just say like, oh, I don't know how that was. So it was like count equals and then check dot count nine and then return count greater than equal to one okay let's do that there you go so now we're getting true and false i was just returning the count i wasn't returning true or false that's what we got that wrong and we might be able to do one more let's uh keep going i guess array one two three so given an array of ints return true if the sequence of numbers one two three appear in the array somewhere okay so uh if we can find like one two three uh, then that's correct. So one, two, three. All right. So to do this is a little bit more complicated, but shouldn't be that um, difficult to do. We're just going to do one for loop and just look through the first three elements and then the next three elements and the next three and just see if they're equal to one, two, three. So to do this, we will say, uh, first of all, we'll just do a quick check. Um, actually, we'll see. We'll say found equals false. And at the end here, we'll just return found. And then we're going to do a for loop. We're going to say for i in range, and then the length of our array, which will be nums minus two. And the reason we do minus two is because we want to get to essentially the third last element, which will be here, and then check if it's one, two, three. Now, there's no point in checking this element because, well, we can't check like two, three, and then blank, right? There's just, there's no way it can be one, two, three, because there's only two elements left. So if we haven't found it by then, there's no point in checking the last two elements. So that's why we do minus two. So that'll mean rather than getting to here, we'll get just to here, and then we'll be able to check the last two. So now what we're going to say is, well, I'll just do a little list here. Um, and this might just be easier to check. And we'll literally just say nums i, nums i plus one, and nums i plus two and we'll say that's equal to like sequence and then we'll say if the sequence so if sequence is equal to and we can just type it out one two three then just return uh, i mean we could return true or we can say like found equals true and then just break this loop um that's probably i don't know that works as well let's try this and see if that works uh running code invalid syntax line seven what did i do wrong uh, nums i, nums i plus one, if so, oh, that needs to be two equal signs. My bad, guys. Let's try that. And there we go. So essentially, the way this one works really easy is, again, we're just going to loop through and we're going to check like one, two, three, and then we're going to go one, two, three, and then we're going to go one, two, three. And we do that by going index i, index i plus one, index i plus two. And then we're just going to compare that to the sequence we're looking for, which is one, two, three. And if that's true, we'll say found, which is up here is equal to true. We'll break out of this loop because if we found it, what's the point of continuing to loop? Return found. And there we go. So uh, I think we're getting to about the 15 minute mark now. So I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. Let me know what you guys thought of this. I know I went kind of fast through some of these problems and I weren't expecting them to be that simple. Uh, in the next videos, we will definitely be doing some more complicated problems with a bit more of an explanation behind them. But I just want to reintroduce this series. Please let me know what you guys think of it. I really want to hear your feedback down below. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.